Before attempting to use stock balancing, please contact the Touch Retail Support representative to set up your balancing plans. Once your stock balancing has been set up, the next thing you're going to want to do is set your minimums and your maximums. To set your minimums and your maximums, there are a few methods you can use. The first method is to use the product matrix. Go down in the tree to a product that you wish to set the minimum and maximum for. Either left click or right click and view product matrix and then open the detail view by clicking on the magnifying glass at the top. This will bring up the detail view on the right hand side. To get to your minimums and your maximums, go to grading. You'll then be presented with this window here. If you have more than one grading plan, for example replenishments and reorders, choose the grading plans that you wish to set the minimums and the maximums for, and then press edit. You'll notice that across the top here, you have your grading attributes which will have been set up when you initially set up your balancing plans with your touch retail support representative. Below there, you'll have your locations that you can set your minimums and maximums for. And in here are your minimum and your maximum quantity. The empty circle represents a minimum and the full circle represents the maximum. If using a replenishment type, the location at the top represents the source location. You can use the across row and the down column tools to set the quantities in bulk. For example, if we wanted to set our minimum to two in Stoke-on-Trent, we will click on the arrow and type two and then click away from the cell or press the enter key on the keyboard. You'll then see that this tick box fills in and these boxes here go a white color as opposed to this striped color. You can then set your maximums. So I'm gonna set this one to four. You can then go ahead and set your minimums and maximums for your other locations. Once you're satisfied with the minimums and the maximums that you've set up, press the commit button at the bottom. The next method for setting your min's max is by using the tree in Explorer. You can set your minimums and maximums at any level in the tree from top category level all the way down to variant level. Simply right click anywhere in the tree, press modify, and then set grading. This will bring up a window here. Like before, choose your grading plan and set your minimum and your maximum. You'll notice that it doesn't detail locations, it only details your grading attribute. This means that the levels will apply to all locations. Make sure to set them active. And it's worth noting that the down column tool also applies to checkboxes. The next method, if you wish to set your quantities on a more global level, is to go to structure and then grading plans. And within grading plans, again, select your plan. But here you'll notice you have the opportunity to choose an attribute. So I'm going to go by brand and I can also filter by location. I can then press edit and then again fill in the quantities. Note what I'm doing at the moment will apply across the entire brand. Again, set it active and then press commit. Now what I've done here is set the minimum and the maximum to the same quantity. This means that if your balancing rule says to replenish up to the maximum when your stock goes below the minimum, you'll essentially get a one for one replenishment. This is also useful for high value or less frequently sold items when using reorder plans. To view your stock balancing, Go to Inventory and the Stock Balancing app, choose your plan, and here you'll be presented with a filter and a navigation menu much like in Explorer of all the products which have fallen into this plan due to the minimum and the maximum quantities. To view your stock balancing report, either click on this arrow here, which will bring up the entire stock balancing report that you have selected, or you can go down to an individual level or even filter by a location and then right click and press pick. This will then bring up an item listing report much like you're used to in other sections of trims. If we filter this down just to one line for a better view, we can see the information provided in the report. This can be modified by right clicking on the column headers and choosing from any of the available criteria. You can then scroll across and you can see your minimum, your maximum stock, and the stock included on any transfers if that's applicable to your grading plan. You can see here our rule, which will have been set up in your initial discussion with your touch retail representative. You can see here that when the stock goes below the minimum, it sets it up to the maximum. We can see that the source location currently has two items in stock and following the replenishment, it will have nothing. And we can see in the balancing tab that our required is two, our suggested is two, and our action is two. Now action is what actually happens when you press commit. So if I adjust this, for example, I only wanted to take one to avoid clearing out the stock level in the source location. And according to our plan, once I press commit, this should create a draft transfer for all of the items included in this report. So I'll go ahead and press commit and then press OK. And then if I head on over to the transfers, and then into draft, 
will find that transfers have been generated for the locations included in the replan report.